Hi, I'm Ina. This is me. I do art stuff and things. And today I'd like to talk to you about this new art challenge that I've started for myself. I'm going to paint 100 movie scenes in gouache over the next 100 years, probably. Um, but let's, um, let's talk about it, shall we? Stick around. How did I come up with this genius and entirely unique idea, you might ask? Well, I have been doing 100 Heads Challenge um, over the past few months and it's coming to an end. And for someone who detests challenges, I um, feel like I can't stop. I would like to continue on the challenge road. A few weeks ago, I came across um, a video by Alison Aletha Illustrations um, where she did 100 Scenes Challenge. Um, and I got inspired. I guess um, this challenge of mine is a combination of hers and 100 heads challenge because I want to expand on my portrait skills and practice things that I struggle with, which is everything but the face and sometimes the face. I also want to take this opportunity to learn gouache since I've been predominantly a watercolor painter for the past two and a half years and I feel that gouache is more me. So this here is my first scene and oh boy did it kick my butt in so many ways. The sketch alone took way more hours than I care to admit to. Um, basically I spent two whole weekends on um, this scene. It wasn't helped by the fact that I picked a very busy scene. Um, but you know, if you're not going to start at the deep end of the pool then why start at all I say. I can only hope that I will speed up as the challenge progresses, but we won't know until we get there, I guess. So come along for the ride. I guess the exciting and great thing about a movie scene challenge is the unlimited source material to choose from. You can never run out of inspiration or references. My 100 movies list has more than 100 movies in it and um, they keep changing. So the final list will not be known until the very end of the challenge, I guess. I've also watched another video by Emily Hughesart, which I'll link down in the description as well, who pointed out that movie scenes are a great source of references for studies because they are aesthetic. They have interest in lighting and composition that has been carefully constructed. So let's dive in. I was actually going to do another movie for my first painting because I made a list, I made it alphabetic and 300 was on the top because it's a number. And then I watched this little gem. I wasn't even watching it. It was in the background. And then it made me pay attention because it is hands down the best new movie I've watched in a very, very long time. And that is considering that I'm not its prime target audience. Don't, don't come for me. Let, let me explain. If you never seen Spaced before, you will miss some layers in Shaun of the Dead. If you've never seen Shaun of the Dead before, you won't know why this. What's the matter, Danny? You've never taken a shortcut before. Is incredibly funny. In a similar fashion, the director of this film has hidden Easter eggs throughout it that I simply don't get because I don't have his lived experience. I did not listen to the same music or watch the same films. I've never been to the US and therefore have no first-hand experience of a community like the Glen. But even without these extra layers, I really enjoyed the movie. It was funny, it was thought-provoking, it made me sit up and pay attention and I really, really wanted to paint it, so here I am. On my second hour of sketching it, and this is the scene that I picked. Nothing much about it, only three main characters and um, everything else in between. Also, if you can hear my dog chewing her chew toy, I can only apologise. It's either that or her barking, so um, I had to pick and choose. And um, I choose the chew toy. I am no movie critic. I'm not smart enough for that. I watch movies and I enjoy them, or I don't. And sometimes I feel strongly one way or another, but can't articulate why. So I watch others on here to explain to me why I did or did not like something. 
So I had to look up some background information about this movie before I set off painting it and talking about it. What spoke to me about it is the character, I wouldn't say development, I don't feel that the characters have developed per se, I feel like it was more the change in view's perception of the characters, the everything is not what it seems situation. The three protagonists are a drug dealer, a pimp and a prostitute. And what made me laugh after the movie was reading that the plot of the movie um, had its beginnings in a joke that the director had um, with his friends over a pimp, a prostitute and a drug dealer walk into a bar. And they thought, what if we made them the heroes? And they did. This movie is a modern take on black exploitation genre, but make it Nancy Drew with a bit of Scooby-Doo. And yes, I had to look up this information because I had no idea that black exploitation is a genre. I apologize for my ignorance. As I mentioned before, I am in no way qualified to review this movie or offer an insight. All I can say is that I really enjoyed it and made me think and it made me want to paint it. What I can tell you is that the acting was fantastic. It took me an embarrassingly long time to realize that the main character was played by the same actor as Finn, you know, Finn from Star Wars. Um, he was pretty bland in Star Wars. He is not bland in this. Jamie Foxx was hilarious as the pimp. Did you know that he started out as a stand-up comedian? I did not, but now I do. The things we learn. My favourite performance and character was by Tiona Paris, and that's Yo-Yo. I thought that she had the strongest more than meets the eye arc um, in the movie. And um, I really, really enjoyed um, Tiona's portrayal of Yo-Yo. Now, she is uh, incidentally the character that I struggled with um, depicting the most. I don't know why, but I really struggled to sketch her and then I really struggled to paint her. By this point, I have drawn and removed and redrawn her face about seven times and that's probably why I had difficulty painting um, because the paper was destroyed by then and you will see when um, I'm painting her face that it was just doing weird, the paper was doing weird stuff. And the other reason was that I don't normally draw profiles. Um, I have done very few, maybe I should, you know, fix that. Um, but that didn't help matters. Um, also, um, I struggled with perspective, I struggled with relationships between the characters. There was just so much going on in the sketch. Um, but I'm pretty happy how it turned out in the end. Um, so that's, that's the final sketch before I started painting. And the general idea was to concentrate on the three main characters at the front and just block in um, the background um, characters and, um, you know, objects, um, just with maybe colour blocking. The filming of the, um, the painting was a bit of a disaster. I was trying to use a different equipment, I was trying to do, use different angles, um, but uh, in the end I've lost quite a lot of footage because things were just not working out, um, batteries were dying, um, SD cards were getting full, um, things were not being turned on, but um, there, there is hours and hours of footage so you know you don't need to see it all. I'm sure you'll get the general idea from the footage that I did manage to salvage. What I really liked about this scene and why I chose this was first of all the colours. I really liked the three distinct colours of the main characters and secondly I really liked the composition and the interaction between the characters. Unfortunately I feel like I failed Yo-Yo and um, the whole mood of the scene because no matter what I did I could not quite translate the the urgency and the movement that she has in um, the photo. Can you see in the photo how she's leaning forward with intensity um, and urgency and in my sketch she is just there. So I guess I have 99 scenes more to practice to convey the movement and the feeling so you know it's all yet to come. My next challenge was using the gouache. I watched a few tutorials about um, gouache. I understand the theory behind it, how you're supposed to start with um, thinner 
watered down layers and then um, you know add it on thicker and thicker as you um, go but um, I feel like I was still using it as watercolor um, no matter how much I tried to remind myself to um, watch the consistency uh, it, old habits die hard okay it's it's going to be a it's going to be a process of learning this new medium I feel like it has a lot of potential. I really enjoy using it, but uh, the the whole consistency thing is a bit of a mind boggle. I mean, I can't really tell the difference in consistency between the uh, tea and coffee. Can you? <laughs> and here we are doing Yoyo Space. Um, and by we, I mean me. Watching it back, I feel like I, I got it pretty quickly and then spent um, two hours messing with it. So I feel like screaming at myself and going, no, stop, but it's too late. Also, the paper was doing weird stuff. Um, not yet, but in a minute, once I add another layer, it started just gathering up into little balls. Um, it was bizarre. I was also using hot press paper for this, and um, I'm not used to it, but I feel it works better for gouache. It's just not in this case. As you can see, the paper, sorry, not the paper, the um, the paint is being pushed around, not really blending or absorbing, just, it's, it's just a mess. It's a mess, okay? I feel like in the end, it, it was okay, but I feel it could have been better. And I'm not certain if it was me or the paper or the paint, or the combination of all of these things, and I, I feel it was a combination of all of these things. As you can see, it went from bad to worse to downright terrifying, but fear not, it's nothing a bit of green lipstick won't sort. There you go, sorted. It's fine now. Only kidding, it wasn't fine. I spent another two hours on this face after that, so... As mentioned before, I, I should have stopped shortly after this, but I didn't. I kept going for quite some time. Um, but I guess it's a, it's a learning process. Um, will I ever be able to stop myself um, whilst I'm in the painting zone? Probably not, but one can dream. I guess the other um, challenge here is the fact that the face is so small. Um, I have never really painted that small before. Uh, obviously, her face is not as small as um, Jamie Foxx's face, and um, that one was terrifying um, because there's just there's not much to it. One one wrong stroke and everything is lost. Um, but it, it turned out okay. I think um, his face turned out the best out of the three of them, in my own personal opinion. That is, um, you be you be the judge um, when you see it. Let me know down in the comments if. Um, you've seen this film, and if you have, which character was your favourite? What did you think? Um, I'm really interested. I don't know many people who have seen this film, so I have no one to talk to about it, really. I could have done a better job of the hair, but also it was my favourite part because it was easy, so I didn't, I didn't overthink it. I just did it and moved on to the next, more challenging um, element. I find curly hair a lot easier to paint than straight hair. Um, it's a conundrum. Uh, even though it's more complex, it is easier to convey the illusion of curly hair. A bit like my curly hair that is just illusion of hair full stop. It looks like there's a lot, but no, it's just air. It's a lot of air. I guess at the end of the day there is uh, a lot more room for error when depicting curly hair um, because it's it's just this glorious mass of curls. But with straight hair there's not really much to hide behind. Again looking back I feel that these highlights were unnecessary. I feel like it looked better without them. Um, something to bear in mind for next time I guess. Um, and that brings us to the fur coat. Oh my god. Oh. My. God. That fur coat nearly finished me. It was so hard. Um, I feel I didn't quite get the colour right. Um, I found it really hard to put the the bright um, yellow of it back. Um, and yeah, the, the texture. Um, I think I ended up, this is real time actually, 
uh, I ended up doing this um, dabbing technique over and over uh, in various um, shades of different colors um, for hours. It, it, it nearly ended me. Um, I still don't feel like I got it completely, but it does translate eventually um, as a fur coat, just not ideal. Um, but again, it is all a learning curve. It just all looks a little bit messy. Um, as you can see, um, I feel like I've used similar tones, um, skin tones and the coat, and it just, it, it all blends. <laughs> I feel like maybe for the next scene I'm going to pick one with just one character and try and concentrate on their clothes um, a bit more. And here's the only footage I salvaged of painting Jamie Foxx's um, head. It's um, it, it's me making life difficult for myself. Uh, why did I think uh, that I should be painting a tiny, tiny um, face and hold the camera in the other hand? I will never know. But seemed like a great idea at the time. Looking back at this, this is not even my smallest brush. I don't know what was going through my head. I have a smaller brush. I should have been using a smaller brush. But um, all's well that ends well. And as I said, um, this face was probably the best out of the three that I've managed. And that's probably because I spent the least amount of time on it. Because I was just so terrified of ruining it. I know a lot of mistakes can be fixed, it was just, it was scary because as you can see just, just one tiny little stroke and everything is lost. And here is me using number two brush um, where I have a zero. Ah, what a boob. What a boob indeed. The fact that I did not ruin this completely I feel was pure luck. It, that's all it is guys, just pure and adulterated luck. The challenge with this coat was different to the fur coat. Um, it was, it had a lot of reflections. So it's it's a purple coat, but it had a lot of these blue reflections um, that I found uh, a little bit hard to, to do, but I did them. I feel they read re like reflections. I think in the end I had to go and glaze it over with a bit more purple. Um, and yes, he also has fur in the um, in the collar, um, so uh, just so many levels of hell. <laughs> Close eyes. I don't think I could have picked a, a more complex scene. We've got two fur coats, um, reflective leather surface, and um, then there's a quilted jacket on the uh, on the main character. I got to be more careful with the next one. Um, I feel uh, I'm going to to do something simple for the next one. Um, famous last words. I feel like I spent a disproportionate amount of time painting this cup. Um, it took way too long, but I feel like it, it looks nice in the end. Uh, I did try that technique um, where you put tape um, to get a straight edge. Uh, and uh, I regretted it instantly because, uh, I mean, I was lucky it didn't tear up the paper, but it was very close um, and also it didn't sort out the edge. Um, I don't have the footage of it. Um, that is uh, lost to the abyss of time and you'll just have to believe me that it happened. I did learn my lesson and did not spend near uh, as much time on all the other elements on the table. Um, I did spend a long time on um, the hoodie and the jacket for um, the main character. And it was at this point where I given up on the overhead camera and set up my phone again to the side, um, which meant that I have blocked most of the painting with my hand because the phone was to the side. Um, I have been filming for over a year now and um, I still have no idea what I'm doing. However, I was pretty happy with the way the jacket turned out. Um, the quilted nature of it terrified me at, at first, and to be fair, through about halfway through. But then somehow it, it clicked, and um, I think it, it reads as a quilted jacket. What do you think? 
I think overall I was pretty happy with how this character turned out. Um, I feel like I have uh, managed to convey his slouchy pose. I was pretty happy with how his tracksuit bottoms turned up. Um, do people in America call them tracksuit bottoms? I don't know. I don't call them tracksuit bottoms. I call them trackies. What do you call them? And then I added um, sort of some details to the background um, as originally planned I just blocked in the um, the background and the background characters and then I had a bright idea of hey why don't I just glaze over the back so that it's all uh, one hue and also muted in comparison to the main characters so that they stand out more and that was nearly disastrous um, because all the layers underneath got activated and it all um, nearly ended up a muddy mess but I feel like it did actually work in the end how I intended and then I had to put a little bit of detail back into that central background character because it, he matters and um, that's the end scene what do you think uh, first one's done I hope to see you again for next few thanks for watching bye